Hello and welcome. Thank you to Library 2.0 for hosting this wonderful online mini conference. And thank you for joining us. I'm Elena Lopez, the Associate Director of the Harvard Family Research Pro Project affiliated with the Harvard Graduate School of Education. And I am joined by my colleague, Lorette McWilliams, a research analyst. Harvard Family Research Project documents the innovative educational roles of families and communities to complement the work of schools. Our work is broad and we do documentation and research, professional development and training, and evaluation. Picture a classroom. Many of you are imagining a space, probably within four walls, with a teacher and student learning together. Seldom do we find families, that is parents and grandparents, in classrooms. But they do have such an important influence in children's learning and social development. We titled our presentation, Beyond the Library as Classroom, Two Generation and Family Learning, to extend the thinking about the role of libraries in promoting family engagement in children's lifelong learning. As Lorette and I were preparing for this conference, we found that family engagement was in the news. You see on your screen two articles from the New York Times and a blog from the American Enterprise Institute. So we were thrilled to present at this conference at a time when media draws attention to the educational role of parents and families. As we develop today's presentation, we look to the sponsors of this conference for guidance. And in their website, they wrote, and I quote, the library as creative classroom means we approach the learning opportunities we create with thought, user-directed planning, and insights from research. So let's start with the research. Behind the headlines in the media, Findings from almost 50 years of research tells us that family engagement matters for children's learning and development. It matters from early childhood through young adulthood. In the early years, family engagement helps children get ready for school. Young children benefit from practices such as parents co-reading books to their children and co-engagement nowadays with digital media. In the elementary grades, parents provide the motivation and structure for homework, enrollment in after-school programs, and extracurricular activities, including visiting the public library. Importantly, when family involvement levels are high, from kindergarten to fifth grade, the achievement gap in average literacy performance between children of more and less educated mothers actually disappears. As children progress into middle and high school, what matters for college and career preparation are family practices that encourage teens to make thoughtful decisions and take responsibility for their actions. When parents say, set high expectations about meeting educational goals, teens are more likely to graduate from high school and enroll in college. Having given you a bit of the research background, let me now turn to user-directed planning. And I will share two examples with you. The first is a 
study of over 10 years of the Philadelphia public library system. The researchers Susan Newman and Donna Solano found disparities in the use of library resources between affluent and impoverished communities. Although the collections were similar, the way in which adult guidance provided to young children and children in elementary school was very different. The researchers found that poor children lack the adult guidance for choosing and using library materials that promote early literacy and language skills. Newman and Solano's research, as well as their evaluation of the Public Library Association's Every Child Ready to Read program, led to a new updated curriculum that is user-centered and meant to give disadvantaged children a fighting chance. So what makes this new curriculum user-centered? Has less jargon, more hands-on activities, there's less lecturing on the part of librarians, and the curriculum offers parents and caregivers of young children five types of experiences, reading, singing, playing, talking, writing, in a fun, relaxed, and meaningful way. Let me now turn to a second example of user-directed um, planning. So researchers at Stanford University developed a text messaging program called Ready for K. The researchers found that parents who received cell phone messages with bite-sized tips on early literacy actually nudged parents to engage their children in learning activities at home and had positive outcomes for children children improved literacy along several dimensions. So when the Brooklyn Public Library came across this research, it had an aha moment. It began an early literacy texting initiative for parents that were enrolled in one of their programs. And these text messages developed by the Brooklyn Public Library are user directed. They are sent to parents once a week so that they don't overload parents with too much information. They are sent at times that allow parents to put the ideas into practice, such as in the evening or over the weekend. And they include specific activities that parents can engage in with their children at home. So with their vast informational resources and connections with community, Libraries are poised to guide families in their children's learning. In 2015, Harvard Family Research Project partnered with the Public Library Association to strengthen the work of public libraries with families. Our project involves documentation, a learning community, and networking and communication. The project is funded by the David and Lucille Packard Foundation in Los Altos, California. We conducted a survey of public libraries to understand the breadth of their programs and services for families. My colleague, Lorette McWilliams, will share the research findings with you and also give you some examples of how libraries are creating novel user experiences. Lorette? Thanks, Elena. As Elena said, as part of this joint project, we've been documenting current practices through a national survey. So first, a bit of background. Our survey was available via a live link online for the month of February. The survey was sent to and intended for library directors and branch managers. So who completed the surveys? We had about a 30% response rate with 463 libraries participating. 57% identified as public library association members. And 54% said that they serve low-income households. Most, 43%, 
said that their library is located in a small city or town. A quarter said they are located in a rural area. 23% are in a suburb near a large city and 10% are in a large city. So to summarize, the typical respondent was a public library association member who works in a library that serves families from low income backgrounds located in a small city or town. Now let's turn to the survey results. Overall, the survey reveals that libraries really shine in their work with families with young children in early childhood ed programming. Our survey indicated that there is strong support for families with young children in libraries. Librarians report that the most frequently endorsed activity in engaging families with young children was with regard to early childhood literacy programs. 73% report that they do this a few times a week or daily. Another strongly supported activity was engaging with families in conversations about selecting books and resources appropriate for children's ages. 67% report that they do this a few times a week or daily. The least offered service was offering parenting courses. About 3% said daily or a few times a week. 97% said a few times a month, a few times a year, or never. Math activities was also a lesser offered at service. 16% said daily or a few times a week, and about 84% said a few times a month, a few times a year, or never. I'd like to share with you an example of a really innovative program that works with young children and families, a project from San Mateo County Library in California. At San Mateo County Library, families learn how to improve their verbal interactions with their young children through an innovative blend of technology and instructional classes. Based on years of research that shows that by age three, children from impoverished backgrounds hear and are exposed to far fewer words compared to children from affluent backgrounds, what is called the 30 million word gap. This gap occurs before children even enter school, and it's a critical period in their development, particularly for language development. In this program, parents with young children are encouraged to increase the quality and quantity of their talk time with children through a talk pedometer. It's like a Fitbit for words. This tiny wearable digital recorder measures the amount and quality of talk in a child's environment and gives feedback to parents showing them how to improve. Complementing this technology is a curriculum that involves parents in parent group sessions. And graduating families can continue in the program for monthly reinforcement sessions for up to a year. Recruitment of this program is a strength. The library has really made efforts to recruit families that can benefit the most from this programming. And the latest cohort has groups from local Head Start and Early Head Start, including waitlisted families and families who are involved with the local housing authority. Recruitment also goes out of the library, way out, to local low-income medical clinics, community groups and partners that work with high-needs families, or locations that families are apt to go to, like local parks. A secondary outcome of this program is that the families really have responded to each other. They love each other and the library staff, and they don't want to stop coming. They continue to help each other out. They have clothing swaps and share tips. And research has shown that building family-to-family -family connections is beneficial for families. It lessens isolation, improves mental health, which impacts family well-being, in addition to the increased access to resources. Now let's look at families with older children and libraries. Libraries have some real areas of strength with elementary age students, particularly offering summer reading programs, which encourage and support children's reading over the summer. 96% of library surveys say that they offer this to elementary age students. Book reading activities and discover, create, and STEM activities were also strongly represented and offered by many libraries to this age group. The least offered activity was coursework or workshops for parents and students for college and career readiness. About 0% said that they offer this for elementary age students. 
similar to elementary age students, libraries have some strong areas with older students. Again, the summer reading programs. 79% of the libraries say that they offer this for their older students. There are also areas that are less strong with this age group, such as offering older students activities around college prep. And that's an area that can use some support and attention. Only 37% said that they offer this to older students. As Elena mentioned, families are very important to children's development, and that's into middle of childhood through those sometimes bumpy middle school and early adolescent years and into the late teen years. I'd like to highlight some examples from libraries that demonstrate the library family partnership with elementary and older age students. Here's an example of using technology in response to family and community needs in summer programming. It's from Homer, Alaska. Kids who read over the summer experience less learning loss, and when families and adults join in, the learning is multiplied. It's also great modeling for children. The Homer Public Library services a large area, about 30 miles north by 30 miles east, and some of the area is very difficult to, tra to traverse as it's remote, making boat or airplane the best methods of travel, and that makes getting to the library difficult. This summer, the summer reading program is using an online digital platform, which allows families and children to register at home on a mobile device or at the library. And you can log your summer reading through this online platform throughout the summer. So while it's a family affair at the library with lots of activities for families and kids, and while this kind of family involvement in the summer is something we see at many libraries, this online digital logging platform makes it very accessible for families and responsive to this particular community. Here are some other examples of libraries reaching out to families in their community and responding to their expressed needs with older children. After school programs give parents peace of mind so that they can work and maintain employment. And parents want their children to be both safe and stimulated, recognizing that after school programs can offer opportunities for physical activity, social skill development, and enrichment. In South Jamaica, Queens, in New York City, families were looking for better options for their children during the after school hours, and the librarians noticed. In response, the library now offers a variety of after school programs funded by the Pinkerton Foundation. There are two homework helpers available and two activity assistants who offer attractive after school activities such as book clubs, cooking clubs, and STEM clubs. Jumpstart, a mentor program, conducts mentor sessions at the library in the after school hours as well, making the library a hub of after school activity. And another example comes from Waukegan, Illinois. In the springtime, the library hosts workshops with outside experts on college application knowledge and skills, such as completing financial aid applications and taking college entrance exams. They also have a parent university, which talks to parents and older students together about the college application process and how to help your child through the process both scholarships are available and career readiness. This strategy of having families and students engage in conversations and learn jointly about college and career readiness is effective. In sum, our research, interviews, and our survey point out three different kinds of action steps that libraries can take to engage in families from young childhood through to older and into high school. Libraries as resources for children, youth, and families play an important role and can take decisive action in three ways to engage families in their children's learning. The first action step is by guiding families with the use of books, resources, and digital media that are developmentally appropriate for children. The second step is by responding to the interests and needs of the families and communities. And the third step is ensuring equity by helping all families access the resources and skills needed to motivate and guide their children for productive roles in a knowledge-based economy. 